you ever wondered how professional rock climbers can stand on their tippy toes for hours and hours at a time? Well, today we're going to try to answer part of that question by cutting apart a professional rock climbing shoe. And we're also going to do a little friendly competition slash test in the back of the shop to see if wearing a pair of climbing shoes allows us to stand on our tippy toes for longer. Or tippy toes. I'm not going to say tippy toes for the whole video. The, our toes for longer. And this video is sponsored by Saybrook Pillows. They make a pillow that combines the best attributes of a memory foam pillow with a feather pillow. And the way they do that is inside of their pillow is a ton of this evenly cut new memory foam. You know, a lot of the memory foam pillows are just a solid chunk of memory foam. You can't shape it, you can't move it, and it's also not adjustable. But with this pillow, all you have to do is unzip the side and pull out as little or as much of this as you want, stuff it in the packaging it came in, and you've got either a super tall pillow or a skinny pillow like I sleep on or somewhere in between, whatever fits you the way you want it to fit. And you might be thinking, well, there's plenty of pillows out there that have memory foam on the inside like this cheap one off Amazon, but you notice the difference between this memory foam, it's got a bunch of hard pieces and it's really crumbly, versus this memory foam. See the difference? So you get what you pay for. So check out Saybrook, it's a pillow I sleep on, and I'll put a link in the description, so thanks again to Saybrook for sponsoring this video. I recently started getting back into climbing after uh, stopping for four or five years to run this business and it took over my whole life, and I always wondered what was inside of them, and I always wondered if these more expensive aggressive shoes that have all these weird features and fancy names for different parts of the shoe actually are different or are they just a marketing gimmick to sell a higher price product so now let's go over the shoe information so the brand is la sportiva the style is the solution comp the color is yellow and black they weigh half a pound each and they retail for 185 dollars and they're made in italy so now let's go over the things that we can see from the outside that help climbers stand on their toes while climbing other than their hours and hours of training and muscles. At first glance, you might think that these are an ancient Chinese foot binding shoe and you're partially correct because that's how they feel when you put them on. But these climbing shoes are especially designed almost tool for climbing that allows you to focus the entire weight of your body on a singular point of this shoe right along the edge. So the first thing is this, just the general profile. And this aggressive profile of this that almost looks like an eagle beak or a pterodactyl beak is purposely designed to support your arch of your foot. And this really heavy arch in the toe allow you to keep as much pressure and weight on that point of the toe as possible. Because imagine if this thing was fully flat when you're stepping on that, you just immediately drop below level. But when you've got a really heavy arch in there, you've got to press that shoe flat and then your foot starts dropping. And La Sportiva's P3 system goes the extra mile by these bands wrapping around to give you, it almost acts as a flexible shank to this shoe. And I don't know if this is actually marketing gimmicks because I don't know if this goes all the way under, so I guess we'll see when it gets cut in half, but it does seem like it offers a little bit of extra support. And when you have these on, you can definitely feel um, how aggressive these shoes are. And the construction of the shoe is a, another big aspect of how climbers are able to stand on their toes for hours because this is a cemented tubular construction which allows your toes to get as close to the end of the shoe as possible. This allows the climbers to be as close to the actual ledge they're stepping on as possible, but also it allows them to feel what's underneath of their foot. And to better demonstrate why you want your toes as close to the end as possible, if you take a normal boot, your toes are somewhere between half an inch to even an inch away from the end of the boot. So imagine if your toes are all the way back here and you're standing on a half inch ledge here, and without your toes over top of that little ledge, the pressure of your toes is actually gonna be pulling the shoe off of the wall. So that's why it's important to have a really tight fit and that's why climbers toes are always jammed in the end of their, their shoes because it allows you to be exactly over top of the ledge instead of pulling your toes off of the ledge. But none of that would matter if you had a really slippery like, like leather outsole. So the outsoles on these shoes are made out of some of the grippiest out, well, it is probably is, is the grippiest outsole in the world because they're, they're, they almost stay indented when you press on them. They're a really soft, almost gummy outsole. A lot of times when you're climbing, a foothold is too high to get your toe up on and it's easier to 
stick your heel up on there. You literally just hook your heel into it and pull yourself up. So it's really, really nice to have a grippy piece of rubber at the heel so you don't slip off and fall. And as for the midsole, I can't tell if this is marketing gimmicky jargon or not, but it says it's a 0.9 millimeter Lastoflex midsole. And I don't know what that means. And I've really never owned a really aggressive pair of climbing shoes. We'll really see when we get them cut in half. But before we cut them, we're gonna have a little test competition with four of us in the shop to see who can stand on their toes the longest, not the ball of their foot, just the toes only. So let's get to it. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm referee. Let's go over the rules. We're doing three rounds. First round, feet only. Second round, shoes. Third round, climbing shoes. Uh, first rule, only toes. Second rule, you can only have your hand on the wall for no more than one second. Uh, and then last one, standing wins. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Round one. Athletes ready. Right foot on. Pause. We're gonna up the ante and add an element of danger. No! Oh my god! <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Oh my gosh! Nate's out! I want to make some see climbing shoes do make a pretty considerable difference on how long you can stand on just your toes. So now it's time to find out what's inside of these La Sportivas. Let's cut them in half. That rubber was really strange to cut through. It just kept screaming at me when I was cutting it. But let's see what's inside. Now 
Now you can really see how climbers are able to jam their toes right to the very edge of the shoe. You know, there's less than a quarter inch from the edge of the shoe to where your toes can be crammed up against. And maybe the craziest and most unexpected thing about this shoe was the Laspos, Laspo Flex midsole. It makes sense now. I, I think I get it because this is basically a shank for the front of your shoe. So they've included a harder piece of plastic or a rigid piece of rubber that's going to retain its shape a little bit better acting as if it were a shank for your toes which is really cool and you can also see that the p3 system here does actually wrap all the way underneath so you do get that extra support all the way through and you can feel when you put these shoes on where that last bolt flex ends it creates almost a little pocket for your toes to sink down in so that you have a little bit of extra feel underneath of your foot and it just creates that little hook so you can focus all that weight on just your toes instead of this gap in your, the ball of your foot. There's also a surprising amount of leather on the inside of the shoe because on the outside, it just looks like it's a rubber and fabric shoe. You can barely see any leather, but on the inside, it's almost completely lined. It's the only thing that's not leather is the tongue. Part of the reason is leather is the perfect material for climbing shoes because of its abrasion resistance, its breathability and its strength. It's, it's pretty hard to beat leather for climbing shoes. So overall, I think this shoe, it's actually surprised me because I thought for sure that a lot of like the P3 system was a little gimmicky, but I think, I think it's still a little bit gimmicky. I think if you're a new climber, the marginal gains you're going to get from buying a more expensive shoe, you're not going to see them unless you're a top tier or a really, really good climber. And just climbing shoes in general, you start to see why people can stand on their toes for hours. These shoes really impressed me because a lot of times we think of boots as a piece of equipment, but these climbing shoes are even more so a piece of equipment because you can't really walk in these. You, you, you would never wear these around. They're, they're wildly uncomfortable and they're, they're a specialty thing that goes around your foot to do one particular thing better than any other shoe in the world. So let me know what you guys think. My camera keeps overheating and shutting off, so I'm ready to, for this video to be done. And we're also redoing the filming room. So it's a temporary filming room. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because I, I like doing all these really odd footwear because a lot of times if there's enough interest, it's, it spins off into a series, which is really fun. And the best way to let me know that you want me to do that is subscribe and I guess like the video and comment and stuff. So thank you guys. See ya.